Hello there, let's talk about earned value management. Earned value management is a very important feature on the PMP exam, even the CAPM exam. But let's very rapidly, in less than 10 minutes, just cover the basics of earned value. To do that, we'll look at a scenario in which work needs to be done. And this work is a painting project. We have four panels to paint. One panel on day one, one on day two, one on day three, and one on day four. But we've broken out each day into two separate discrete pieces. So on day one, we need to get both of these pieces done. On day two, we need to get both of these pieces done. And same for three, two pieces, and day four, two pieces, okay? Now the way we've planned out this project is we have made a promise to management. Earn value is based on promises. Promises to get work done within a specific time period and for a particular amount. So look very carefully at day one. If I make this bigger here, on day one, we have told management we will get both of these panels done and we will accomplish this on day one. So by the end of day one, we expect to see both of these panels painted yellow. Not just that, we also expect to see the amount of money spent to accomplish this conforming to the budget. In other words, our cost at the end of day one will conform to the budget. So we're promising. We're going to get it done in one day. We're going to get it done for a budget of $50. We can also break down this scenario into two panels done at $25 each, hence the total budget of 50. This is a typical project. It's business as usual. It's a promise to management. We've told management the budget for day one. Now, if you look at all the other days, we've got day two, three, and four, same budget. Similar work, different colors of paint. Day two, $50. Day three, $50. Day four, $50. So what we're saying is at the end of four days, all of these panels will be complete for a total budget of $200. Do you follow that? $200 for the entire project. Now, we refer to that total budget as the budget at completion. We call it the BAC, the budget at completion. So we can say that the budget at completion for the total project, all of these, is going to be $200. Fair enough? Good. Now let's start looking at these earned value metrics. There are three core metrics that we talk about in earned value management. And I'm going to show you what those three metrics are. So let's zoom in a little bit here. The first metric is called planned value. Think about planned value as the value of work scheduled to be done within a particular time period, within a specific time period. So if we take a look at this image one more time, a time period of one day for day one, one day, we are setting out to accomplish $50 worth of work within one day. And that's really what plan value states. The value of work scheduled to be done within a particular time period. So we can actually put in these amounts here. Day one, the value of work scheduled to be performed is 50 dollars worth of work and that is what plan value is so the plan value for day one is fifty dollars and it's fifty dollars because that's what we've set out to achieve we've broken it into two discrete parts to have better clarity and better decomposition but it is fifty dollars so that's day one plan value the next metric is percent complete, which I'm going to tie to earn value. So the main metric is really earn value, but you cannot really understand earn value 
without seeing percent complete. Percent complete is the amount of work you actually achieved. So in an example, let's say we accomplished all of the work for day one. That means that the value of the work we accomplished is 100%. So let's go in here and put in a few more figures, 100% complete. And if we put in 100% complete, that means we accomplished all the work that was scheduled. So we know $50 worth of work was scheduled, but earned value is a reflection of how much work we actually got done. And if we put enter, we can see we've got the percent complete times the plan value to give the earned value. Percent complete times plan value is earned value. Remember, this is day one. So this is how it actually would look at the end of day one. At the end of day one, we're saying we got both of the panels done. We got 100% of the work that was scheduled done. The work that was scheduled was valued at $50. And because we got all the work done, in our table here, we can see the earned value is $50 as planned. We plan to get 50 done. We got all of it done. Now this is the final metric. This final metric is called AC, actual cost. Actual cost is how much I paid for the work accomplished within the specific time period. One more time. Plan value, PV, earned value, EV, and finally, actual cost, AC. Now, in this example, let's assume that instead of getting this work done for the amount we targeted, we had some cost overruns because there were some environmental factors that affected us. There were weather delays that prevented this external wall from being painted. So, for this scenario, I'm going to say that the actual cost was not $50. I'll say we went over budget. We went a little bit over budget. So let's go back to our table and put in this final amount. Let's say the actual cost was $61. Now, when I put $61 in, you will begin to see the right-hand side of the table being populated. But I'm going to explain what exactly is happening on the right-hand side of the table. I'm not going to show it to you just yet, but when we get there, I'll explain it. But for now, I want you to see these three different metrics. Plan value, how much we planned would be done within a particular time period. We value the work to be done at a particular amount and we put it in a time box of one day. And then we actually start the work, we do the work, we get all the work done. So the work cannot be valued at more than what we promised. If we promised we're going to get it done for $50, it is worth $50 when we get it done. Now the actual cost is the third dimension, how much you actually spent to get it done. We got all the work done, but we had cost overruns. Now, when I come back, I'm going to show you the last part of this table. We're going to go into the four derivative metrics. Cost performance index, schedule performance index, cost variance, and schedule variance. So now we've talked about the three core metrics. Let's talk about the derivative metrics. Let me introduce you to CPI, SPI, CV, and SV. Now, before we go into the calculations, let's talk about these at a high level. To get the Schedule Performance Index, as the word index implies, you're going to divide something. Earn value divided by plan value. In fact, if you look at this table, you'll very quickly realize that earn value is king. 
Why do I say earned value is king? I say it's king because all of these metrics start with EV. The indices start with EV divided by something because they're indices. The variances are EV minus something because they're variances. So they all start with EV. If it's a variance, use subtraction. If it's an index, use division. If it starts with an S, think S for schedule, planned value. The schedule is the plan, keep that in mind. If it starts with a C, like cost performance index or cost variance, think C for cost, which is actual cost. And that's the trick to know in these formulas, they all start with EV, variances, subtract, indices, divide, S for schedule, which is the plan, C for cost, which is actual cost. They all start with EV. Take a look. Simple. Once you get it down to that rhythm, it becomes easy to understand these formulas, to keep them in mind. What does CPI mean? Just remember, if it's an index, greater than one is good, less than one is bad, equal to one is on target. C for cost, cost performance index. So this means if CPI is greater than one, cost is lower than budget. It's good. Less than one, cost is higher than budget. Bad. Equal to one, project is on target. The same thing for schedule performance index. Greater than one is good. Ahead of schedule. Less than one is bad. Behind schedule. Equal to one, project is on target. For the variances, greater than zero, good. Less than zero, bad. Equal to zero on budget. Schedule variance, greater than zero, good. Less than zero, bad. Equal to zero, work is on schedule. Now we could go into this in a lot more detail, but I'm trying to keep this at a high level so that we can move along swiftly and understand this first example that I am showing you on the screen. So remember, at the end of day one, these were the core metrics we had. $50 for PV, $50 for EV, and $50 for AC. Now, when you put these values into the formula, we have 0.82 for CPI. That's bad. That means we are spending more than we're getting done. Where we look at SPI, it's equal to one. That means we accomplished all the work that we scheduled for day one. And we can see that from the $50 worth of work accomplished, we got all the work done, but we ended up spending $11 more. And lastly, the schedule variance is earned value minus plan value. So that's equal to earn value minus plan value and we have zero and that's why we have nothing showing there so that's zero for schedule variance and that means we're doing great as far as schedule is concerned we'll enter a zero there it doesn't make any difference it's a configuration of this particular sheet. Let's go on to day two. Let's see what happens in day two. At the end of day two, uh-oh, we've only accomplished half of what we set out to. So the plan value, what we plan to accomplish with both of these, right? We, we plan to get that done. But when we take a look, we can see we only got half of it done. That means we only got $25 done for day two. So if you go to a sheet here and put in the plan value, $50, what's the percent complete? We only got half of it done. So that's 50% complete. And then if we, and we can see with the 50% complete, we now have $25 as our earned value. Remember, this is earned value. Okay, so we can see our earned value is 25. For the sake of this illustration, I'll say that the actual cost spent at the end of day two, let's take a look one more time, 
This is at the end of day two. Remember, day one wasn't very good. We spent $61 to do both of this. End of day two, we've got only half done. How much have we spent? For the sake of this illustration, I'm going to say we've spent $30. So let's put that in. And when you take a look at the formulas, what do you see? When you take a look at the formulas, you see the CPI is 0.83. What does that mean? It means that out of the work that we set out to accomplish, if we take a look at the cost and take a look at what was accomplished, we got $25 worth of work done, but we spent $30. So 25 divided by 30 gives us that. And that tells us as far as cost, we're not doing very well. In terms of schedule, we're only 50 percent efficient. That's what that 0.5 means. It means we only got half of the work assigned for that time period accomplished. Now if we look at the cost variance, the cost variance shows us we are five dollars over budget. So it shows us how much we are over budget in context of the work complete. So it's not judging us based on the work we planned to get done, it's judging us based on how much we have accomplished. So management would be happy to see that while we only had this amount of work done, $25 worth of work done, we haven't spent $50, we've spent 30, which is not very good, but not as bad as having spent $50 to get only $25 worth of work done if you follow what I'm saying. So that's the cost variance and lastly the schedule variance is $25 minus $25. So let me call your attention to this though. These numbers in brackets are negative. Okay and this is Excel and it's the way it's been configured but this is a minus, this is a minus, this is a minus. I should have pointed that out first that you have positive variances and negative variances. Negative variances are bad, positive variances are good. If it wasn't in brackets, it would have been a positive variance. So just bear that in mind as you go through these examples. Okay, there's something else I'll call your attention to before I round this up. I'd also like to call your attention to the fact that you could calculate the plan value across the entire project at any point in time same thing, the earned value across the entire project and the actual cost. And I have a little formula down here that is doing this for me. So at the moment I've got a plan value of $100 cumulative. Percent complete across the total project is 0.375 and if I look at my other metrics I can see how well I'm doing and I'll just make these general. And right now I can actually see how well I'm doing as far as the entire project is concerned. So my CPI and SPI are awful. These are my variances based on where I am at the moment. So as you look at earned value management, bear in mind that you could look at it across the entire project or you could look at it in terms of days. Okay. I hope that helps you have a better idea of earned value. I have additional days, day three, and on day three, we got these done. I'll leave that up to you to calculate what day three's PV and, well, you know what the PV is, but what's the EV? And if I say the actual cost spent at the end of day three, is $80. What do you think those metrics would be? AC is 80. And you can go back to the table and put in those numbers and see what you come out with. I hope that helps you. This is just a very brief tutorial. It's not meant to be an all encompassing view of earned value, but I hope that helps you get some um, 
ideas of what to expect on your exam. All the best.